Hi everyone. Today we're going to dive into the interesting topics on DC motors. Have you ever wondered how these motors work just by connecting them to an electrical source? You'll find DC motors in many everyday equipments like handheld fans, electric toothbrushes, shavers, toy cars, and many others. Let's break it down in today's video. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any update. First, let's understand the working principle of a DC motor. A DC motor is an electrical machine that transforms electrical energy from a direct current or DC supply into mechanical energy. This transformation is based on Lorentz law principle. Now you might be asking, what is Lorentz law? Lorentz law tells us that when a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a mechanical force. This mechanical force, known as the Lorentz force, is the result of the interaction between the magnetic field induced by the current carrying conductor and the surrounding magnetic field. A simple DC motor has two main parts, the stationary part, called the stator, and the rotating part, known as the armature or rotor. The stator is typically made of permanent magnets or electromagnets, which create a magnetic field across the armature. The armature or rotor contains windings of current carrying conductors where mechanical force is generated for rotation. Let's consider a single coil of armature placed between two poles of a permanent magnet. This winding is connected to the power supply through a commutator and brushes. The commutator, known as split ring commutator, is crucial to reverse the current flow direction in the armature winding, ensuring the armature keeps rotating in the same direction. Now let's break down how the DC motor completes a single turn. When we connect the armature to the power supply, current starts flowing through the coil from the positive to the negative terminal, from D to A. As the current flows through the coil, magnetic field is induced around it. We can determine the direction of this magnetic field using Maxwell's right-hand grip rule. Imagine this. Point your thumb in the direction of the current, and the curl of your fingers shows the direction of the magnetic field. This induced magnetic field interacts with the surrounding magnetic field of the stator, creating a mechanical force that pushes on the coil. At the opposite side of the coil, the directions of the induced magnetic field and force are reversed. Here's a fun way to remember the direction of these forces. We can use Fleming's left hand rule. Stretch your left hand with the thumb, index finger, and middle finger, all perpendicular to each other. The index finger points in the direction of the magnetic field, the middle finger shows the direction of the current, and the thumb points in the direction of the force. With this method, we can see that the forces acting in opposite direction create a rotational torque that makes the armature turn clockwise. As the armature spins and gets close to vertical orientation, the force is temporarily canceled out. However, the momentum from the previous spin keeps the armature moving past the vertical position. Here's where the split ring commutator comes into play. Notice the pair of split ring commutators switches their contact points with the brushes and reverses the direction of current flow from A to D. This reversal keeps the rotating torque pushing in the same direction, allowing the armature to continue rotating. As the armature reaches 270 degrees, the momentum again helps it pass the vertical position and the split ring commutator reverses the current once more from D to A. This continuous process keeps the DC motor spinning as long as it's connected to a DC power source. Now let's talk about the induced electromotive force or EMF. As the armature windings rotate in the stator's magnetic field, an EMF is induced across the armature windings according to the principle of electromagnetic induction. This induced EMF opposes the applied voltage across the armature windings. To determine the direction of the induced EMF, we can use Fleming's right-hand rule. Point your thumb in the direction of motion, the index finger in the direction of the magnetic field, and the middle finger will show the direction of the induced EMF. The induced EMF is essential for motor operation because it directly affects the armature current, which in turn regulates the motor's speed. To understand this, let's look at some formulas for a DC motor. 
The current can be calculated by dividing the voltage difference between the DC supply and induced EMF with the cable impedance. In this equation, the induced EMF is affected by the rotational speed. When the motor spins faster, the induced EMF increases. This makes sense because a higher speed means more cutting of magnetic flux. On the other hand, when the motor spins slower, the induced EMF decreases. Besides, when the motor needs less torque, the current flow decreases. But when the motor is under a higher torque load, the current flow increases. Under no load conditions, the motor requires minimal mechanical force, or torque, and rotates at maximum speed. Consequently, the induced EMF is higher, almost equal to the applied voltage, resulting in less current flow in the armature windings. However, when a load is applied, the motor speed decreases, reducing the induced EMF. This increases the armature current, providing higher torque to handle the load. The same concept applies when the load is reduced, as explained in the no-load condition. This simplified version shows how a DC motor works, but in a real DC motor, multiple magnetic poles at the stator and armature windings at the rotor are constructed to ensure smoother and continuous rotation. There are two main types of DC motors that use electromagnets. First, we have the shunt wound DC motor. In a shunt wound DC motor, the stator windings are connected in parallel to the armature windings and the DC power source. It's commonly used in applications requiring constant speed, like conveyors and lathes. Next, we have the series wound DC motor. In this type of motor, the stator windings are connected in series with the armature windings and DC source. It is ideal for applications needing high starting torque, such as cranes and electric traction systems. And let's not forget the permanent magnet DC motor, which you'll find in toys and small robots. That's it for today's video. I hope this helps you better understand the basics of DC motors, their working principles and applications. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications and share it with others. Thank you for watching.